there, ice cream lovers. Steve Christensen's my name, the self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School. Uh, we're broadcasting from St. Louis, Missouri. Still keeping up with the post-COVID or COVID beard. Uh, keep track in future episodes to see whether the beard is continuing to grow or whether I've been told to shave it all off. Now, I do want to thank our episode sponsor, which is Lockhead Vanilla, also based here in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Three generations of vanilla goodness. Uh, LockheadVanilla.com. By the way, don't call them up and say, is this Lockheed Vanilla? That's a type of aircraft. Lockhead Vanilla, good Scottish name. Uh, tell them that Steve-O sent you and uh, look, they'll answer all of your vanilla needs. Thank you for sponsoring this episode of the uh, Scoop School sessions. Now, I know we've spoken about homogenization before. We get a lot of questions about homogenization and basically uh, I went through the video vault to the archive, if you will, to find a video on it and I couldn't find one. So we're going to do one because it's an important part of the way the mouth feel is of your ice cream product. Now, when the milk comes from the cow and it goes through the process of uh, being developed into an ice cream mix, that milk has a lot of different fat globules in it that are different sizes. They're not uniform. Big globs, little globs, big globs, little globs, some as big as your head. We need to have them very systematically the same size because big globs of fat or fat uh, globules in your ice cream isn't good for mouthfeel and it can separate out in the churning process. So homogenization is basically making all of these fat globules the same very small size. And how do we do that? Well, a, a homogenizer basically is a big piston that is ramming into a opening here with a very small hole in it. <clears throat> now they say uh, on most homogenizations, it's one, or most homogenized, it's one micron in size. So what happens is a homogenizer, and many homogenizers that are found in ice cream units, there's actually about five or six of these all working at the same time in the one unit and each of them have a piston that's pushing this way. Imagine if you're watching this without the sound on, you're going, what the heck is he drawing? So what ends up happening is these pistons push in and out. It's a hydraulic piston. They're constantly pushing in and out. And while that's happening, mix is being pushed into here. So these big fat globules are being pushed into here. When the piston draws back, the mix drops into this cavity here. The piston comes down and actually pushes it through this one micron opening. Boom. Ted Galloway calls it a violent aspiration. It basically just go pushes it. It's sort of like pushing cheese through a strainer really hard and then it's kind of just basically pushing out the other side. But the thing is that all of these fat globules now are very, very small and they're all uniform. How small I hear you say, um, I don't know to tell you the truth. Uh, but I do know that what happens with good homogenization is that when you are churning ice cream either in a custom machine or a soft serve machine or a batch freezer and at the end of a good day Day of churning you take that front plate off or you pull the dasher out and there are butter fats build up on the blades that's a sign of good homogenization it's not separating out it's staying all consistent and staying on those surfaces where it's kind of beating them the most bad homogenization is where you're getting those little chunks of fat actually in your ice cream. If you've got a custom machine and you've got that ribbon coming down the slide and there's little yellowy deposits there, that means that your butter fat while it's churning is actually separating out and coming out in the ice cream. You see that also in um, your batch freezers as well. Now, don't fret, you don't need to do this yourself because many of the commercial mixes that you get have already been both homogenized and pasteurized. In fact, homogenization happens first, then it goes from the homogenizer to the pasteurizer. Um, now, there are two settings, basically an, uh, an in and an out setting. They're generally a pressure, so it might be 
1200 PSI going in and 1400 PSI going out. You don't need to know any of that. All you need to know is that basically the fat globules that are coming out of the homogenizer after it's been processed are all consistent so that it gives you a much nicer mouth feel. There's no separation. Remember back in the 70s when the milk used to be delivered and there was that cream on the top that used to basically scoop off? Well, that's unhomogenized, a very poorly homogenized milk. This process uh, helps keep all of that cream, that creamy goodness, that butterfat goodness, all mixed within your ice cream mix very uniformatively. Uniformatively? Is that a word? I don't know. Uniformly? Uniform? Anyway, you look it up. Leave a comment below the, what the word is. Uh, that's homogenization. Uh, it's very important. It's the unsung, unseen hero of the ice cream mix business because it keeps all of your products tasting beautiful and clean and non-fatty, uh, if you will. That's all we have for this episode. If you have questions about homogenization, please leave them in the comments below. Also, please hit like, and why don't you subscribe while you're clicking on the buttons down there? Because we're getting very close to 10,000 subscribers, and there's going to be a really big giveaway at the 10,000 mark. The biggest giveaway we've ever done in Scoob School history. And I'm making this up on the spot, but we will actually have a big giveaway. Now, that's all we have for this video. Thank you again to our sponsors, uh, Lockhead Vanilla, John, uh, George, Darren, Matt, the whole crew. Keep on scooping. See you in the next video.